This program is made possible by the generous partners of Dwayne Miller Ministries. Stay tuned for a message that will strengthen your faith. Get ready for insightful teachings, uplifting testimonies, and practical wisdom that will encourage you to live in victory. Welcome to Today with Dwayne and Cameron Miller. Hey, Pastor Dwayne, along with my beautiful bride, Cameron, we want to invite you into a Sunday service. This has been previously recorded, but it is one of our Sunday services. And this message, I pray, is going to be a blessing to you as well as the atmosphere of our congregation. So God bless you as you join us in one of our Sunday services. What I've called you to do. Here's what you do in my kingdom, and you sow. And on your way to the other side, here's a storm. But you understand that that is a demon trying to take control of your atmosphere because, listen, he can't drown you. They're afraid they're going to die. Jesus is like, look, dude, I made this mud hole. And if I'm the head and you're the body, no man ever drowned with his head above water. No man ever drowned with his head above water. Listen, the only thing in your life that's underwater is what you got out from under the head. When you take it out from under the head and you're out from under his head, then you might, you might drown. I'm preaching better than you're shouting now. It's like I told you last week. I've come too far to let any petty little thing get me out from under the blessing of God in my life. If you're the type of individual that can't be lovingly corrected, that can't be, especially by someone in authority, you're going to have a tough life. And you ought to thank God somebody loves you enough to correct you. You know, the only people out there that aren't corrected are those who are so rebellious and hard to deal with that everybody's just left them alone. We were at my grandson's baseball game yesterday, and there's a little boy on his team in the dugout, and Cameron looked over there at me and said, he needs a good spanking. <laughs> I said, yeah, he sure does. Not my grandson. This other little boy. And he really did. He was a monkey. Your parents pulled out that belt because they loved you. Amen. And they were not going to let you self-destruct. Neither is Jesus. So now watch, Jesus, the Bible says in chapter 5, verse 1, and when they got to the other side, everybody say, I'm going to make it Amen. to the other side. Amen. You have his word on it. Amen. Remember, they started out great. He said, we're going to the other side. And by faith, they got in that ill-equipped boat because they believed they were going to the other side. Then the storm comes, and now doubt and fear and anxiety sets in because they are living in their flesh and in the natural and they're looking at the earthly realm instead of being seated with him in heavenly places, looking at what he said from heaven to earth, knowing that if he gave you his word, it's done. Yeah. Yeah. So they get to the other side and I don't have time. This is a whole, whole other message. But you know what happens when they get there. They come to Gadara. And the word Gadara comes from a Greek word that means walled up. It means inhabited and walled up in the root word for Gadara. So in other words, they come to a stronghold. What is a stronghold? A stronghold is a house of wrong thinking for a believer. Oh, a stronghold is, is a walled up inhabited place. So they come to Gadara, and there they meet a church member, a deacon. This old boy's messed up. I've pastored him, I know. Now watch, Jesus did not come there because this guy is demon-possessed. That's not, that's not the destiny. If Jesus just needs to offer a demonstration on casting out demons, he's got plenty back over on the other side of the lake, starting with the Pharisees. 
Jesus didn't need to travel 11 miles across the lake, go through a storm and scare his disciples to death to find somebody that had a demon. There were plenty of demons everywhere. But he has a greater kingdom purpose. His kingdom purpose far surpasses a man with demons. And this guy didn't just have a demon. He had 6,000 of them. Don't look at your husband right now. You can talk about it when you leave, okay? (laughs) And watch. Now, you better listen to what I'm about to tell you. If you have an assignment from God, you don't have to go looking for the demons. They're coming to you. This old boy ran to Jesus and fell down and worshiped him. And he's got 6,000 demons. I'm t- you laugh, I'm telling you, I have preached to churches full of people who were full of demons. And demons love great worship services. They'll dance, huck and buck, lift their hands, speak in tongues, flip-flop in the floor. They don't mind until they come in contact with someone who can see them. especially Jezebel. She loves to be in church. And, and, and it could be he. It's not a, that's not a female demon. Loves to manipulate and control. We've seen it. We've, pa- I'm, we've pastored it. I mean, I can remember in the early days of my ministry in, in El Dorado in the Baptist church, I can remember very well getting lectured from some of those old timers about now, you better watch out for brother so-and-so or you better watch out for sister so-and-so now because if they don't get their way, well, I'm sorry. They got Jezebel running the show. Hello. I'm preaching better than you're shouting. Well, now you got to walk on eggshells around. Listen, they need to be delivered. So this old boy runs to Jesus falls down, worships him, and out this voice, what are we to do with you? It's not yet our time. And so they, can you imagine demons negotiating with the Messiah? (laughs) But they are. There's 2,000 swine over here, 2,000 hogs. Can you just let us go into the greatest sermon I've ever heard in my life is Dr. Randy Caldwell's sermon on demons can't swim. I mean, it's the best. It's the best sermon. If you can find it out there, buy it from him. You need that sermon. Demons can't swim based on this passage. I don't have time to preach that, but the reason they wanted to go into swine is because the only way a demon can manifest is in a body. Demons are the disembodied spirits of the last world age. Now, I'm going to get deep here, and I'm going to lose some of you. Because you think the earth's 6,000 years old. It's 6,000 years old since Adam, but this thing's been here for billions of years. And there was a world age before ours that Lucifer was thrown into, and a third of the angels from heaven. And God had to destroy it. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face. What is darkness? The absence of light. Darkness is not real. It's the absence of light. And God had to destroy it with the first flood. And then God shows up in the middle of that darkness and says, let there be light. And the word came out of his mouth, Jesus Christ. The word came out and lit up creation and the universe before the sun, moon, and the stars. So these demons are negotiating with Jesus. Can we just go, what were there, why were there 2,000 hogs? And I, you know, I have a, an evangelist friend that's from Georgia. He's actually originally from South Carolina, and he can't say the word hog. He says hog. <laughs> they're not hogs, they're hogs. <laughs> I know because we're Razorbacks. <laughs> and we don't call the hogs. <laughs> the football and basketball team may be hogs the way they've been playing, <laughs> but the baseball team's hogs. The temple of Zeus stood in Gadara, and the worship of Zeus was offering swine on the altar. And there, so Jesus, this man who had a great sense of humor, he went and delivered this old boy and took the atmosphere and ruined their worship service in the process. Hallelujah. 
They ran over into the water and died. Hallelujah. But that's not why he went. And that's not what he's teaching the disciples. Here's why he went. Because the, the Gadara was the gateway city into a region of ten cities known as Decapolis. The word deca in Greek is where we get our English word decade or ten or complete. And it was the gateway into that region. If you were going to be traveling into Europe, you had to come through that region. And here was a, a demon named Legion. We are many, 6,000, controlling the atmosphere of that region to keep the kingdom of God from penetrating that dark, spiritually dark place. But Jesus went into the gate, into the stronghold, the walled up inhabited place, and he took on that principality called Legion, and he removed that principality. And then that man was born again and filled with the Spirit, and Jesus sent him back home to tell his family what the Lord had done for him. And here's why that's important. Because we fast forward into the book of Acts and we see in the book of Acts a man named Saul. And Saul was on his way through this gateway to a place called Damascus. And the word Damascus comes from a Hebrew word in its root which means the loudest voice rules. And Saul comes into this region to go kill Christians. I ask you, how are there Christians in Damascus? Jesus never went there. Not one of the disciples had gone there. How did they know about the Messiah? Because a man who was possessed of 6,000 demons went back home and his wife got a new husband and his children got a new daddy and he told them what Jesus had done. And now Saul is going there to kill these Disciples of the Messiah who had never seen him with their own eyes. But because Saul, a Pharisee demon possessed himself, walked into an atmosphere that was controlled by Yeshua. The voice of God now could speak. And Saul said, Lord, and he was born again. Because Jesus took an atmosphere. And that's still not the reason Jesus did it. The reason he did it was because through that gateway and through that region of ten cities, your ancestors in Europe had the gospel preached to them by Peter decades later. And you're sitting here today born again because Jesus went to a Gadara and a walled up place and took out Legion and a man got saved and he went and told his family and Saul got saved. And you're sitting here born again today because of that one act of Jesus to take control of an atmosphere. Yeah. Isn't that great? Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So when you operate in the kingdom, you cannot operate in your flesh Amen. and in your feelings and in the commotion of the loudest voice in your life. You can't look at the storm. You've got to look at your destiny. Yes. If that demon had succeeded in scaring those disciples back to the other side, what would have been the result? There's an entire untapped world out there waiting on you to take control of an atmosphere so the gospel can be effective. Listen, what do you think all of these prayer strikes are for and all of these prayer movements are for in America right now with Dutch Sheets and Clay Nash and Chuck Pierce and all of these other prophets of God? Why do you think that they're taking the time, the money, the energy, and the effort to relive the Oregon Trail and to prophesy and decree into the atmosphere. I'm telling you because the weapons of our warfare in America are not carnal, but mighty through God to pull down strongholds. To pull down that demon force of the spirit of Antichrist over Washington, D.C. so that the atmosphere can be cleansed and the Holy Ghost can walk into the bedroom of a senator or a congressman and say, listen, it's hard to kick against me. You have to understand there won't be an abortion issue if all of these precious young ladies who find themselves in trouble find Jesus. Amen. 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 That's where the, oh, believe me, I'm against it. And I believe in protesting it and praying and all of that. But I'm telling you, when they find Jesus, they won't want to kill their babies.
So I'm almost finished. What is this mystery? What is the thing that you have to do to operate in the kingdom with power, to cast out demons, heal the sick, to preach the gospel with effectiveness, and to spend time with Jesus? What do you have to do? What is the mystery? Mark chapter 3. He told them before he ever called them and sent them out there to do it. Mark 3, 27. No one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man. Then you can plunder his house. That's good. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, "Watch now watch me show it to you. I'm going to go over here to Legion's house and I'm going to bind Legion and cast him out. Amen. And billions of people are going to be saved as a result. Billions. I don't say this lightly, and I'm not trying to be unkind. But the problem in America is not the politician. The problem in America is the pastors who are entertaining demons in their churches. Yes. And doctrines of demons. Yes. Preaching a gospel that's built around culture. Yeah. Preaching a gospel that's built around their own interpretation of the past. Instead of preaching this kind of gospel. That's right. But if you're going to preach this kind, get ready. They're coming for you. Amen. But greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Would you bow your head? Holy Spirit, thank you for making this truth clear, plain, present, powerful. We give you the glory and the honor and the praise. In this room and watching online right now, if you've never, ever confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord, you can do that today, right now, right where you are, sitting in your seat or watching at home or wherever you may be watching. You can simply pray a prayer like this in your heart to the Lord and say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner, and I know that you died for me and you rose from the dead. I confess you today as Lord and Savior. Forgive me and be my Lord. If you pray that and mean it, you're born again. That's what the Bible says. Confess with your mouth, Jesus, Lord, believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. If you prayed that and meant it today, would you write me an email? Or if you're here in this room, would you come see me after service? Or someone in leadership and say, I prayed that prayer with pastor today. We want to help you. I believe the way that Holy Spirit wants me to close out this service is to ask each and every one of you, are you entertaining anything or anyone in your conscious mind that is a stronghold against God's destiny for you? Are you allowing anything to keep you from walking in power? Is there any area of doubt, fear, unbelief, worry, anxiety, anger, unforgiveness, resentment, bitterness, strife, Right now in the name of Jesus, tell it to shut up, sit down, and to get out. You have the authority. You have the power. Take control of your soul, which is your mind, will, and emotions. If you're battling a stronghold in your physical body, tell it to shut up and get out now in the name of Jesus. By his stripes, you've already been healed. Holy Spirit, I thank you that we walk warring from the promises of God and not for the promises of God. And I thank you that everything you've promised us is yes and amen and finished, called complete, blessed, 
You've prayed the benediction over it in our life. It's done. Lord, the, the time between your promise and the manifestation of it, we stand in faith. We stand in the gap. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Before I dismiss, right now, you know someone who is a prodigal or an unbeliever, someone struggling. You know someone who's under the manipulating power of Jezebel and they're wishy-washy in their walk with God. They're walking in their flesh and not by faith. We're not judging. It's not our place to judge, but we're concerned. And right now, call their name out to the Lord. Speak over the atmosphere that's controlling their thought processes. Lord, we bind the enemy from the lives of people who have far too much to offer for your kingdom to watch them be manipulated and controlled by the enemy and abandon their destiny. Lord, we speak clarity and truth and love. Lord, we call the prodigals home. We call them into their destiny and their gift and their anointing. I pray, Lord, for a Saul moment in the lives of those that we're praying for right now. For Jesus Christ himself to walk into their bedroom while they're sleeping and call their name. For angels to be dispatched to walk into the, the bedrooms of these individuals who are floundering and call their name. For you to awaken this generation with the supernatural of God. Lord, you do what we can't in the name of Jesus. I would say that every person that's sitting here today, look at me, you're, every one of you are burdened for someone. And you know that they are not going to the other side. They got in that boat and the storms came. And you know what? It, the flesh wants the path of least resistance. But the path of least resistance will drown you. Here's the strategy. You know and I know talking to them doesn't do any good. I mean, it really doesn't. They're not going to listen. They wouldn't be in the condition they're in if they... And for a lot of these people that we're burdened about, they know the truth. Yes. But they're tired. They're worn out. They're beat up. And they just want peace. The problem is only the Prince of Peace can bring peace. Amen. The strategy... In your prayer life, stop praying for God to turn them and for God to change them and for God to open their eyes. Speak to the darkness. Speak to the lies. Bind the lies of the enemy. Bind the atmosphere that they're operating in. Bind their flesh. Lord, take control of the atmosphere of their life. Bring them to the end of themselves. And Lord, for those unbelievers, take the scales off their eyes that they've been blinded by, by the darkness of this world and the principality of the air. Open their eyes to the light. There's your prayer strategy. Quit speaking to the problem, even the person, and go to the atmosphere. Amen. I hope that helps you. Would you stand on your feet? For those of you that are, and you know who you are, that are coming to this leadership meeting, we'll be meeting in the 
middle room over here, the youth room, we call it, the prayer room, the intercessor's room, immediately after the service. And so we'll try to be brief. Thank you for do- coming and attending that. We have our baskets back there for your tithes and offerings. You can sow at DwayneMiller.com. You can click on the edge and sow there. You can text to give 501-237-5676. Thank you for your faithfulness. You know, there's nothing wrong with pastors. I used to do it a lot, standing up and teaching on giving and taking 10 minutes to do it and all of that. I'm thankful to Pastor Church. I don't have to do that. Amen. You guys are so faithful, you just do it. Hallelujah. I've never been a group of people who tithe on a percentage basis as high as you do. And so I bless you for that, and I thank you for that. So bless you. And the Lord return it a hundredfold. Hallelujah. I believe there's about to be some mega massive millionaires in this church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because <laughs> that seed's coming back. What well, has to. And it's okay. I, in, in love and grace, and I remind him every day, Lord, it has to. Your word said. So until it manifests, I'm just standing in faith knowing it's coming. Lift your hands and receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you and his countenance be with you and be gracious unto you and give you his shalom, nothing broken, nothing missing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Have a great, blessed, glorious week. And pray for us next Friday and Saturday at the Eagle's Nest teaching, but I will be back here Sunday. So we'll see you next Sunday. Karen and I thank you for joining us in today's broadcast where we previously recorded a sermon on Sunday. And we hope it was a blessing to you to come into our congregation and our atmosphere on a Sunday morning service. Until next time, God bless you. To contact this ministry, visit our website at www.dwaynemiller.com. You can email us at info at or send your letters to Post Office Box 1331 Cabot, Arkansas 72023. We would love to pray for you. If you need prayer, please call 888-997-2387. Please join us in person at the Edge Church on Sundays at 1030 a.m. We are located at 6702 TP White Drive, Cabot, Arkansas 72023. This program is available to watch on demand. Visit our website, YouTube channel, or the following streaming platforms to catch up on any episodes you may have missed. To stay connected with us, follow us on social media. Find us on Facebook at Dwayne Miller Ministries or on X at Dr. Underscore Dwayne Miller. This program was made possible by the generous partners of Dwayne Miller Ministries. If this broadcast is a blessing to you, please consider partnering with us. You can text GIVE at 501-237-5676 or give online at www.dwaynemiller.com. Thanks for watching Today with Dwayne and Cameron Miller.